Thank Amen. You, Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We defined a dream as a series of thoughts, images, or emotions occurring during sleep, or a visionary creation of the imagination. Somebody say that's a vision. It's a vision. And we, we, we spoke about vision two weeks ago. We spoke about how your vision must be uh, a God-given vision and uh, not only just God-given, it must be God-given and it also must be God-driven. That's why you cannot, you cannot uh, allow just any vision to come uh, into your mind, to come before you. You must always ensure that your vision is a vision that is from God. Amen. And, and we were talking about Jacob and Jacob... Uh, Jacob got to this place and the Bible said that Jacob slept and he slept and he slept. And in the times that men sleep, even though you are asleep, your eyes are closed, but your spirit is not asleep. Because you are still receiving, you're still receiving instructions. And in the time of the night is the time that a lot of people, a lot of people that are conscious of the fact that things do happen in the night, even though they are sleeping, yet they are not sleeping. Can I get an amen to that? Because I really want to share with you that some things happen in the night and when things happen in the night, you have to be aware of the things that happen in the night. The Bible tells us that Jesus will often go and pray all through the night. So there has to be times that children of God must awake in the middle of the night and begin to talk to God because there is just something that is special about the night Amen. and it is during the night that some of us uh, receive some instructions from God and I want to explore those instructions uh, and see what the Bible tells us uh, about dreams uh, somebody said uh, he dreamed because we saw Jacob at this point. We remember where Jacob was coming from. Jacob was actually coming from running away from the thing that he actually did. Oh, somebody said that's grace. Because he actually did it. It's not that he did not do it and they're lying on him. He actually did it. And here he was. He was running away. He had all the anxiety. He had all the, all the emotions going through him. What's about to happen to me? I am going to my uncle. And, and I happen to know a little bit about my uncle. Because, because, because they pass information by oral history. History. So I will assume that at some point in time, his mother will have told him about his uncle. So he had an idea, the kind of family that he was going into. But this is the place that his father said, I would prefer that you go and marry somebody from this family. So he's going with all the anxiety. Lord, what's going to happen to me? And he got to this place. And he put the stone down, laid his head upon the stone, and he began to dream. Amen. That's the dream that I want to explore this morning. I want to look at the dream, the pictures, and the, 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 the pictures, the thoughts, and the images, the emotions that occur while you are sleeping. You got to you got to understand this that when we when we experience the open heaven uh, we experience the supernatural when we experience open heaven uh, we experience the kingdom of god on earth uh, as it is in heaven uh, open heaven is really our access to the very throne room of god uh, and 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 dream uh, played a very important role in the life of jacob in his open heaven somebody say open heaven, open heaven. hallelujah but let me tell you something about dreams. Let me tell you something about dreams. Not every dream is of divine origin. You've got to test the spirit. You cannot just assume that anytime you close your eyes and whatever pictures pop into your mind, it's, oh, it's a dream from God. No, not every dream is of divine origin. That's why you must be sure about what the word says. And every dream that is going to be from God must line up with the word. 
every dream must line up with the word. You got to test the spirit. But let me tell you something. Now, some of us, some of us say that um, I don't dream. We all dream, but we just don't. Some of us just don't remember our dreams. Uh, we all dream because there are pictures uh, and things that are happening in our mind uh, even when we think that we are sleeping. But I want us to begin to pay attention to the images that you see in your sleep. The images that come to you are the times that you lay down. Uh, it could be a time that God wants to pass some information to you. But stay with me now. God may want to say something to you. God may want to pass some information to you in the time that you are asleep. That is why even though you are sleeping, but you must be conscious. There is something that medicine has developed and they call it conscious sedation. Conscious sedation. Some of you might have had some surgery and they don't put you totally under. So you're not fully asleep because I, I, was, I was a part of that surgery and I was asking, I said, what does this mean? Uh, the person was asking, how did I get off from, because the last time I remembered, I was sleeping on a different bed, but now I am on another bed. How did I get from here to there? Did you have to carry me? They said, no. You got up by yourself. We told you to walk from there to there. You responded to that instruction. And after the whole thing, guess what? You didn't remember it because it's called conscious sedation. So in a way, you are conscious, but at the same time, you are asleep because you cannot account for anything that happened. All you know was that before you slept, you, were, you didn't feel any pain, and now that you woke up, they've gone in there, they've done whatever they needed to do, and now you're feeling pain where they did it. Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So even when you are asleep in the middle of the night, you must still maintain a level of consciousness. A level of consciousness. You cannot just be asleep and be totally asleep and be totally unaware of the things that are happening around you. A mm. uh, uh, divine uh, dreams. I want to talk to you about divine dreams because dreams come from three sources, three main sources. There are demonic dreams that is definitely not of God. Those are the dreams that you should not be having. But if perchance you have a dream that you know that it's totally against what God is saying, you wake up and you cancel that dream. You can't sell that dream. There are dreams that originate from the soulish realm. They originate from you. It is all about you. It could be because of the things that you ate the night before. That big bowl of pasta can begin to speak to you in the middle of the night. You know, you ate it so late at night, you can expect that at some point in time, it's going to begin to say something to you. It may not be what you want to hear. It may be what you want to hear. But that's a soulish dream because it originated from you and it is all about about you it has nothing to do with the demonic and it also has nothing to do with the divine but there is also the divine dream somebody say divine dream. divine dream and those are the dreams that I want us to talk about today divine dreams divine dreams divine dreams the Bible used dreams as a revelation and we see it in the life of Jacob that it was a revelation to Jacob Jacob was, had a lot of anxiety about where he was going, about where he was coming from, about whether he will ever be able to get back home. So he had all this anxiety and then when he slept and the heavens opened, somebody say open heaven. And as soon as the heavens opened, he saw, he saw, he saw angels going back and forth. He saw a connection between the earth and the heavens. He saw that even when you are on earth, you could live a life of heaven on earth. Can I get an email from somebody? He saw that he doesn't have to be confined to exactly where he was 
angels, but that he could also partake of the things of heaven. And God began to speak to him, and God began to give him assurance that it is well with you. Somebody say it is well with me, because God is giving you that assurance that it is well with you. God began to tell him that you will go and return to your father's house because I am with you. And the heaven had always been open over you, even though you did not realize it. But thank God you are seeing it now. Somebody say, I see the open heaven now. I see the open heaven now. I see the open heaven now. Because God is giving his assurances to you that he's going to watch over you. He's going to keep you. That it is well with you in the name of Jesus. The things that used to make you anxious. The things that you are anxious about, God said, I have already taken care of them. Amen. Not that I am going to take care of them. They were already taken care of. Jacob said, wow, I didn't know that God is in this place. Oh, I got I to gotta, I gotta do something. Put a monument down and call the place Bethel, the very house of God. How many know that God is in this place? How many know that this is your Bethel? Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So a dream, a dream can be a revelation from God. A dream can be a revelation from God. That's why you need to pay attention to those dreams. A dream can be used for divine ideas. And I love this. I love this. That you can sleep and receive divine ideas from God. Jacob slept and God an idea that made him very prosperous. Very prosperous. In the face of adversity, God gave him an idea in a dream. In a dream. There was adversity all around him. His employer, his boss, was out to cheat him every time. At every turn, he changed the contract. He changed the contract. He changed the contract. I wonder why he didn't sue him. Yeah. Amen to God with the glory. Because in this day, we will have taken it to court and said, Judge, no, you can't do that. You cannot change the contract. This was the contract. But he just kept changing the contract. He changed the contract. He changed the contract. But the Bible did not tell us that Jacob now started to complain against Laban. He did not complain. He simply went to sleep. In the midst, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of the storm, some of us ought to learn to sleep. Because Jesus, 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 when there was a storm on the outside, the Bible said he put a pillow to his head and he just lay down to sleep. Was it because he was not aware of the storm? He was aware of the storm, but he knew that the storm could not overpower him, so he could just go to sleep. Oh, some of us, we get so anxious uh, oh, because we have this issue here. We have that issue here. We have that issue here. And because of that, uh, it begins to affect our sleep. Uh, we cannot sleep. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, yesterday, you did not sleep. Uh, yesterday, you were anxious about it. But that didn't solve the problem. Amen. So you might as well go to sleep. The Bible said concerning God that he never sleeps nor slumber. So why does two of you have to be awake? He's already awake. He's taking care of the problem. So you can go to sleep. Somebody say, I will sleep well today. I will sleep well today. He said he gives his beloved sweet sleep in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord. So all he did was that he slept. And in the midst of sleeping, divine ideas started dropping in. Divine ideas. Divine ideas. Divine ideas. I've been asking the question that what is the scientific explanation for what happened to Jacob and there? 
Because the Bible described it that he will put uh, a piece of wood in front of the animals that as the animals came to drink water and as they were drinking water they were mate and as they were mating they are looking at the, they're looking at this at this piece of wood that you put down and then as soon as they looked at that at the time they are mating it will produce the very kind of babies that Jacob wanted. I've been asking, I've been because for most things I can I can I can I can articulate the, the, the scientific explanation that we have been able to come up with. And I've been asking that question for many years. And I think I may be close to the answer. I'm not going to tell you that I have the answer 100%. But as it develops, I will tell you what I know. Because this is what I know. This is what I know. What you focus on, you will manifest. What you focus on, you will manifest. When the animals begin to focus on the stripes and on the stripes and the streets, it begins to manifest in their offsprings. Amen. So some of us need to begin to reshape our focus. We need to begin to focus on the right things. We need to be able to look at some things and say, this is where I am going. My eyes are set like a flame and my focus is directly upon this and nothing can shift my focus because right from the beginning it was God ordained in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody say, I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. I am going somewhere. The problem with most of us is we don't know where we're going. Amen. We don't know where we're going. And when you don't know where you're going, everywhere you get to will appear to be like the right place. Because you don't know your destination. If you know your destination, even when you get to some place of comfort, you will still know that, well, it is comfortable here, but God still has something greater for me. Can I get an amen from somebody? You are going somewhere. You are going somewhere. Don't let the circumstances of now keep you to where you are. Jacob received from God that I am still going somewhere. The things of yesterday Today cannot imprison me because I'm free from yesterday. I'm going into a glorious tomorrow because God is with me. Somebody say God is with me. Oh, God is with me. God is with me. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. The Bible said in Genesis 31:10. You see, when it was happened, the Bible didn't tell us about it. But then later, uh, uh, um, uh, Jacob was relaying this. So his wives uh, telling them the reason why we have to do what we're doing. Then he said, uh, and it happened at the time when the flocks conceived uh, that I lifted my eyes and I saw in a dream. And behold, the ram which leaped upon the flocks was straight and speckled and gray spotted. Then the angel of God spoke to me in a dream. Somebody say in a dream. Saying, Jacob. And I said, here I am. And he said, lift your eyes now and see all the rams which leap on the flocks are straight, speckled and gray spotted. For I have seen all that Laban is doing to you. I am the God of Bethel, where you anointed the pillar and where you made me a vow, where you made a vow to me. Now arise, get out of this land and return to the land of your family. He said, I'm the God of Bethel. Why did he have to refer him to Bethel? Because he needed to refer him, he needed to give him a point of reference. When you have a point of reference, it is very difficult for you to miss where you are going. When you always have a point of reference, when you have something that God gave to you at the beginning of where you are going, you will always know that this is what God said. God told me, God told me, God told me. So he knew he needed to go back to that place of uh, 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 to that place of Bethel, uh, that point of reference, so that he can map uh, where he's going. Now, God reminded him, I'm the one that did it yesterday. Some of us needed to be remembered, and uh, some of us need to be reminded uh, that God did it yesterday, and if he did it yesterday, he will do it today. So, the worries of today, you have seen something similar to that before. 
And when it happened the last time, you thought you would never be able to get out of it. But guess what? You got out of it because God was with you. So why do you think you're not going to get out of it this time? The same God is still on the throne in the name of Jesus. Somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. The, the message translation says, Once, while all the flocks were mating, I had a dream and saw the billy goats, all of them strict, speckled, and mottled, mounting their mates. In the dream, an angel of God called out to me. Jacob, I said, yes. He said, watch closely. Notice that all the goats in the flock that are mating are strict, speckled, and mottled. I know what Laban has been doing to you. I'm the God of Bethel, where you consecrated a pillar. I made a vow to me. Now, be on your way get out of this place go home to your birthplace mm. now we see not only did um, Jacob receive divine instruction divine uh, um, divine idea in the dream he also received divine instruction there are times that you will get instructions in your dreams. Divine instructions. Amen. Telling you what you should do and what you should not do. Amen. Divine instructions. Thank you. Joseph was caught in the midst of something that he didn't bargain for. And here he was. <laughs> All he did was, you know, I saw this young girl She's pretty, she looks good, she talks good, she smells good, and I like her. So but he didn't he didn't bag in for all this Holy Spirit thing and making my girl pregnant. He didn't bag in for none of that. All he saw was I see this young girl, I like this young girl, I would like to marry you. And it looked like everything was going well until Mary showed up. Wait a minute. What is happening here? I didn't do nothing to you. Are you pregnant? What? What? Explain this to me. Explain this to me. Because every time that I've spoken to everyone who is older than me, they told me that you need a man and a woman to be able to get to the place of pregnancy. How did you do it? Ah, oh, the Holy Spirit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, 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 stop. Explain this to me again. What, what, what Holy Spirit that came upon you and you became pregnant? Wait. I think we should do this right. I am a righteous man. I'm a holy man. Why is anybody not saying amen? Amen. I'm righteous. I'm holy. Amen. You gotta help me out, right? Hey, Amen. Pastor is righteous. Pastor is holy. Hey, Amen. I tell my wife all the time that I'm a holy man. Hey, Amen. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, "I'll do it right. I'll, I'll just, I'll just put Mary away." You know, because the, the 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 consequence of that was that she was supposed to be stoned to death. And the angel of the Lord came to Joseph. In a dream. In a dream. And said, Marry Mary. That's all the dream. Marry Mary. Amen. Some of you may get those kind of dreams. Amen. Marry Mary. You may not understand it, but just marry Mary. Amen. But make sure that it's of God before you marry Mary. Amen. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Marry Mary. That was the dream. And, 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 and for that reason, he just went ahead and he married Mary. But that was not all. When the time came, Joseph would continually receive instructions from God by dreams the time to take the baby out of the land and take the baby to Egypt was in a dream the time that they were supposed to come back from Egypt and come back to Israel was in a dream so he was receiving divine instructions by way of dreams 
So that's number three. Number four. Dreams can come as divine warnings. Divine warnings. Let's use the account of uh, the time of the birth of Jesus. Uh, the, 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 um, the wise men. The wise men. The wise men. Um, I, I, was, I was doing a show on the radio uh, not too long ago and, and, I, and I kind of said, the three wise men. And I said, no, 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 no. The Bible doesn't tell us that there are three of them. The Bible only tells us that they are wise men. So there could be two. There could be 200 for all you care. But it is just wise men. But we know they brought three gifts. And two people can bring three gifts. And a hundred people can bring three gifts. And four people can bring three gifts. So there are wise men that brought three gifts. But somehow, somewhere, I don't know how we walk that into the whole thing. We all have this mentality that it's three wise men. But that's not what the Bible tells us. Amen. Anytime you want to buy a nativity scene, uh, you, you will really have to travel far to see one that doesn't have three wise men. To God with the glory. I think the last one we had to have three wise men. And we set it up out there. But we know that the Bible does not tell us that there are three. There could be three. But the Bible just didn't tell us, it just said wise men. So this wise men came, and they came, and they came and saw Jesus. But while they were coming, they came through Herod. So by the time they came through Herod, they had a discussion with Herod. And Herod said, when you go, make sure you come back and tell me about this king, you know. Uh, I want to go worship him too. Uh, I just want to be like you. I want to go worship him. But in a dream, they received that divine warning. Don't go back to that man. He has evil intentions. Some of you will receive divine instructions through your dreams. Because the heavens are open unto you. Amen. Amen to God be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Number five. Your dreams could be very prophetic. Your dreams can be very prophetic. Uh, prophecy is really saying things that are yet to happen. Saying things that are yet to happen. So you can begin to see things that are yet to happen. You may have had dreams. And sometimes you forget about it. You totally forget about it. But then when the picture starts playing in reality, you're like, whoa, I've seen this picture before. I've seen this, I've seen this, yes, it was in my dream. I saw this dream, and in some situations, once you are walking into it, say, I've seen this in my dream. And then you can actually tell what is going to happen next. Because it's a prophetic dream. It's a dream that's, uh, that's to warn you of the things to come. It's a dream that's to tell you of the things to come. It's a dream that God uses it as an opportunity to put a deposit on the inside of you. Somebody that had those kind of dreams. Dreams. Oh, we spoke about Joseph in the New Testament, but let's go take the Joseph from the Old Testament. Somebody that had that kind of a prophetic dream was Joseph. Joseph had a dream. And when Joseph had the dream, the dream must have been very puzzling to Joseph himself because of his culture. Because it was in a culture where uh, the older is very much respected. So there is, that, there is that respect between the old and the young that you will never expect that the young, that the old will bow down to the young. That it just doesn't work that way. So for him to have seen a situation that appears that all his brothers were going to bow down to him. It was, it was something that must have been troubling to him. But sometimes it's not everything that you see that you see. It's not everything that you see that you say. Some things you need to go to God and ask God, is this something that I should be sharing with somebody else? But here it was Joseph. He went and he opened his mouth and said, guys, gather together. Let me tell you this wonderful dream that I had. I had a dream that all you, you, including you, the oldest, and you that you say you don't like me, and you that you used to do this to me when I was a kid, all of you, you're all going to bow down to me at some point in life. They say, what? What are you talking about? 
It seemed like it was just a, it was just a little joke. It wasn't, ah, I don't mind him. He hits his things when he sleeps and things. Then he calls them together again. He said, wait, call everybody together. My father, my mother, call everybody. Not only are you all going to bow down to me, you pop, you mom, you're going to bow down to me too. And the father said, whoa, this is not going a little bit too far. Where are you getting this from? That we're going to bow down to you too? He said, yeah, that's what I saw. There are some prophecies that you hold on to yourself. The Bible said concerning Mary, she pondered these things in her heart. She pondered these things in her heart. It is not wise for you to speak everything that you see. The wisdom is that you must be led of God as to what you should share and what you should not share. Can I get an amen from amen. somebody? Because we, we, we're, going, we're going into a place. We're going into a place that you will prophesy. Can I get an amen from somebody? We're going into a place that you, as a member of Glory House of Prayer, you will begin to see things. You will begin to see things. Some of the things that you're going to see are going to amaze you. And, and, and it's going to be like, how do we deal with this? Because the, the Spirit of God is going to stir us up. It's going to move us. It's going to move us. It's going to move us in the name of Jesus. And we will get to the place that the Bible said that I desire that you all prophesy in the name of Jesus. But you're not going to prophesy just out of the abundance of the pasta that you ate last night. Can I get an amen from somebody? You prophesy out of the abundance of the Spirit of God in you, in Jesus' name. Somebody give God praise. Hallelujah. So there are prophetic dreams that are meant to be kind to you. They're meant to help you. But what help will it be if you don't even remember the dream? What help will it be if you didn't pay any attention to the dream? Joseph had this dream, told the brothers the dream, told his father the dream. And at that point, nothing was mentioned about the dream anymore until we now read about the manifestation of the dream now we the readers are the ones that are saying wow what he said he saw is actually happening the brothers showed up in egypt and here they are bowing down to joseph at that time they did not realize it was joseph but they were actually bringing a manifestation of that dream in jesus name now there are some dreams that you will have that will blow your mind there are some dreams that you will have that, that you will you will wonder whether is this ever possible can I ever see myself in this place that I saw in the dream? I want you to hold on to that dream. I need you to hold on to that dream. I need you to hold on to that dream. Never, never, never believe that it is impossible. Because with God, all things are possible. It is possible to them that believe. So if you saw it, you may not be able to tell people. Because it may be, it may just be too awesome for them to deal with but that's okay if it's something that you cannot share at this point in time the manifestation of it will share itself can i get an amen, amen. when the testimony shows up it will share itself in the name of jesus hallelujah. hallelujah so we get dreams that are prophetic in nature there is something called lucid dreams lucid dreams that's a dream that you are aware that you are actually dreaming. You are in the dream and you know that you are dreaming. It's a dream that you actually have a measure of participation in the dream. And then you have a degree of control of what is happening in the dream. A lot, of, a lot of research has been done about this. A lot of people will tell you, they want to sell you things that will make you have lucid dreams and things. Google it, you'll be amazed at what's out there on lucid dreams. But I, I, I really don't know whether we can call the dream of Solomon a lucid dream. 
I, I, I really don't know if I can tell you that he had a measure of participation or he did not have a measure of participation. But this is what I can tell you. I can tell you what a lucid dream is and then I can tell you the dream of Solomon. Because I find the dream of Solomon to be a very interesting dream. Because it was a dream that God came and God began to have a conversation with Solomon. It was a dream that God trusted Solomon, he trusted him so much that Solomon would provide the right answer to the questions that God was asking him. So here was a man, he must have been tired after slaughtering all those goats and the cows and the bulls and I know he wasn't slaughtering them by himself but just overseeing the slaughter of those animals and just making sure that the blood is flowing in the right place everywhere there is blood all over the place sacrifice upon sacrifice upon sacrifice he's kneeling down, he's stretching his hands to heaven he's praying, he's, he's, he's giving praise and worship to God he's, he's just thanking God and just thanking God and just thanking God and all of a sudden in the evening he must be tired he let down to sleep and then he begins to have this dream he begins to have this dream God shows up begins to tell him how much he appreciates the praise and worship that he has brought to him amen hallelujah how many appreciate the praise and worship that we had today? Hallelujah. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. I told the ministers in the back, I said, you better be nice to them because we must bring them back. Amen. 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 You better be nice to them. So you better be shaking their hands and smiling. But that's what we normally do. It's amen. not that they're doing it for you. Amen. amen. To God be the glory. Can I get an amen from somebody? That's what we normally do. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. God said, I appreciate all the praise and the worship. And because I appreciate what you have done, what does this tell me? That there's some things that you can set in in place that God will show up and God will say I appreciate what you have done I appreciate what you have done there was a man of God he said he was he was coming out of a, a prayer uh, uh, some kind of meeting uh, uh, some convention some seminar whatever it was and as he was driving home he's praising God he's thanking God then he hears the voice God says thank you he said really thank you to me he said yes Thank you. There are some things that God that you will do that God will appreciate that you do. That's not the complaining. That's not the murmuring. Uh, I'm not talking about all of those. That's not the uh, gossiping and saying things that you're not supposed to say. But there are some things that you will do that you will say that God will say thank you. Thank you for leading my people in praise and worship. Thank you for putting your heart into it. Thank you for putting everything that you got into it. No matter how little it was, but you gave everything. So thank you. I appreciate it. You may not sound like the angels in heaven, but thank you because the sound to me, the music to me, is like the angels in heaven. And I just appreciate it. And I thank you. It's not. It's nothing to do about your skill set, but it's all about giving everything everything you got and so here was God telling uh, Solomon thank you thank you and by the way what would you like to have that's a question that I would love God to ask me amen and I don't know about you I already have an answer amen and I need you to have a prepared answer what would you like to have? What would you want me to do for you? Amen. Do you have your answers? Yes, sir. Amen. Nobody has an answer. Yes, sir. Me. I've been telling you that the angel is going to show up. Amen. And when the angel shows up, you must know exactly when he shows up. You say, sit down. Pastor has already told me you are coming, so I have been expecting you. How many are expecting an angelic visitation? Can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. amen. So you got to be prepared. If, you, if an angel is showing, if I tell you I'm coming to your house, the last time I tried this, it didn't go down well. Amen. <laughs> so I'm not, I'm not going to do it again. Amen. To God with the glory. Hallelujah. If I tell you I'm coming to your house, wouldn't you be prepared? Don't tell me what you have ready for you. <laughs> Amen. If an angel is coming to your house, you will be prepared. If you knew that somebody is coming to your house, you will be prepared. 
And I want you to be prepared for angelic Amen. visitation. Amen. He said, as we entertain strangers, we will entertain angels. So you must be ready. You must be one of the people that are entertaining strangers and just doing things for people. Uh, we were speaking to somebody who said random acts of kindness. Random acts of kindness. You must be known as a kind person. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So God asked Solomon, what do you want me to do for you? Solomon said, I already have an answer for you. I've already been thinking about this. I've already had an expectation that you will show up and ask me this question. And this is, this is my problem. Your people, these people, not the people of your house of prayer, you're wonderful people, amen. And said, your people, these people are kind of difficult to govern. Help me in dealing with these people. He said, no, oh, that's all you want? He said, I will give you more than you have asked for. Thank you, Lord. Let me show you that I am a God of exceeding abundance. Amen. That I will give you exceedingly abundantly beyond what you have asked for. Thank you, Lord. And God began to tell him Amen. the kind of blessing that was going to come to him. Amen. The seventh point that I want to talk about in terms of dreams is interpretation of dreams. Interpretation of dreams. Um, there are numerous books on interpretation of dreams. From every perspective that you want it. There are numerous books on biblical interpretation of dreams. Uh, they, they pretty much have, have put dreams almost to a science. If you see this, it means this. If you see that, it means that. If you see that, it means that. There are tons and tons and tons of books out there. But let me help you. Save your money. You don't need it. There is only one book that you need. It's called the Holy Bible. That's all that you need. It will explain all of your dreams to you. Amen. Because you have the Holy Spirit on the inside of you. And the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Amen. So you have all of this. But let me tell you why the interpretation of Bible, interpretation of dreams is very important. Here was Joseph. He's had Joseph in the Old Testament now. He's had his, uh, he's had his own dream experience, his dreams, and his dreams that uh, his uh, brothers are going to bow down to him. His dreams uh, that all of these things are going to happen. And, and then there is a whole gap of time that none of this was happening. As a matter of fact, things were sliding downhill. He went downhill to the point that he found himself in a pit. He went so bad that, I mean, he, he got to a point that he will say, I am so depressed that I, I, I just want to end it all. Because, uh, but there was a promise of God. And that is why you must always have that point of reference uh, and never forget that promise of God. And But here he was. Uh, he thought it was all over, but they drew him out uh, and they sold him. And then he must have said uh, to himself, my God, I am a slave. Sold. Then he gets into Egypt. Uh, but well, praise God. I'm still the head of slaves. I still have some position in my master's house. Praise God. Then it begins to slide down again. I thought my brothers are supposed to show up now and bow down to me in my master's house. And, and when they come, there will be slaves that are lower than me. But it didn't happen way because it's going to happen God's way. So he's, uh, he begins another slide down because uh, he's handsome, because he's a hardworking man, because uh, he, he, he has developed himself and all the muscles are ripping out in different places. Amen. And now the woman couldn't take her eyes off him. Now what was supposed to be good is now being a downward slide gets into trouble because of his good looks. Now, here he is in jail. 
And in jail, God gives him favor again. Favor. This time around, he did not dream. But this time around, other people dreamt. He said, why, why, why do you look downcast? What's, what's the matter with you? He said, oh, I had a dream. Oh, I had a dream. Oh, I had a dream. He said, well, tell me your dream. They tell him the dream. He gives an interpretation of the dream. The other one comes. Tell me your dream. He gives the interpretation of the dream. He said, but wait, 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 wait. When these dreams manifest, don't get me here. He had such assurance that it was going to happen. And then it happened. And one was killed based upon the dream. And the other one was exalted back to his position based upon the dream. And then Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, had a dream. Had a dream. And in the dream, he sees all these pictures that nobody could interpret for him. And then the, 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 uh, uh, the butler said, I, I, I remember a man that interpreted my dream. And you bring Joseph. And Joseph said, the interpretation of dreams belongs to God. Because they said, we understand that you are able to interpret dreams. But the interpretation belongs to God. So when people come to you and they bring their dreams to you, let that interpretation belong to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, tell me what to say to this person. What is it that you're trying to say to them? The interpretation be, 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 uh, be, belongs to God. We also see in the life of Daniel. Daniel also had the same opportunity. And he used the interpretation of dreams to get to the position of a governor of a province. Interpretation of dreams. That is why that we should be able to interpret our dreams. Amen. Now, 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 let's now kind of wrap this up. When you, when you look at the word dream in the Bible, it shows up about 92 times in the Bible. And in those 92 times, it showed up 84 times in the Old Testament. 84 times in the Old Testament. Some of you are very good with math, so you're already doing the math. So how many are left for the New Testament? If we have 84 out of 92, uh, I'm doing my own math. I did it before I got here. Uh, uh, we only have eight left in the New Testament. And when you go to the eight that are left in the New Testament, in the Gospels, there are six of them. Stay with me now. We're going somewhere with this. In the Gospels, there were six of them. That was before the Holy Spirit came. That was before Jesus died. When Jesus died, there were only two references to dreams. As a matter of fact, one of them is not a real reference to dreams because in the book of Jude, it was talking about the dreamer. It was talking about the dreamer. So the only reference that we see after Jesus to dreams or to a dream is in the book of Acts. When Peter was talking, and Peter was talking, Peter was actually quoting and repeating something that was said in the Old Testament. So Peter was not actually telling us that he had a dream. So in essence, let me read to you Acts, uh, uh, Acts chapter 2 verse 17. That's where Peter said, and it shall come to pass in the last days, uh, in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. That's, 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 uh, that's the reference that we have to the word dream in the New Testament after the Gospels. So what is that telling us? 
in the time past, God used various methods to speak to his people. We read that in Hebrews. I don't think I have that on the overhead for you. Uh, but in Hebrews chapter 1, in very good point, <coughs> Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through uh, one and two. Let's think, uh, let's do one and two. God, who at various times and in various ways uh, spoke in time past uh, to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days uh, spoken to us by His Son, whom He has appointed here of all things, uh, through whom also He made the world. So in the in the Old Testament. And even in the time of the birth of Jesus, we see God speaking uh, in various ways. We see him speaking in dreams, in visions, through angels, through burning bush, and even direct speech. But here in the New Testament, we don't see, we don't see uh, anyone saying, I received by way of dreams from God. What am I saying? Now, the Bible tells us, what we just read, that in these last days, he is speaking to us by his son. His son is Jesus. And Jesus is the word. So these days, he is speaking to us by his word. So we must, we must, we must rely on the word more than we will rely on dreams. Can I get an amen from somebody? Our reliance must be upon the word and upon the Holy Spirit and let the Holy Spirit speak to us and minister to us in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Stay with me now. Stay with me. I am not in any way suggesting that God cannot speak to you through dreams. He is God. He's able to do whatever he chooses to do. But he's pointing us and referencing us to the fact that we must be word-led, we must be spirit-led, as opposed to chasing after dreams and saying that we are dream-led. If you are only dream-led, you have a lot, you have a lot of room to make errors. But if you are word-led, and if you are spirit-led, you have no room for errors. Oh, can I get an amen from somebody? Therefore, as it is important for you to be conscious of your dreams, because I have come to a place that I truly believe that some of you are going to see some things in your sleep. You're going to dream some magnificent things. You're going to dream some dreams of prophecy. You're going to dream dreams of revelation. Divine ideas will come to somebody in their dream. I believe all of this. I believe you will receive instruction. I believe you will receive guidance in your dream as you sleep. God will be ministering to you. The angel of the Lord will show up, but everything, everything, everything you see must be tested against the word. Everything you see, you must look at it from the mirror of the Holy Spirit. What is the Holy Spirit telling you in the name of Jesus? Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. Somebody give God praise. As the people of old were, were very concerned and very consumed by their dreams, so also are people of this age concerned and consumed by their dreams. And the, the, now the focus is so much on the dreams. In as much as I believe that you can have divine dreams, but the focus must not be on the dreams. The focus must always be upon the word and the spirit of the word. Can can I get an amen from somebody? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In our text, in our text, going back to Jacob, the heaven was open. He saw the messengers of God. He saw angels. This brought him to a place of revelation. He said, God is in this place. God is in this place. God is in this place. So when you get to a place that you know, that you know, that you know that God is in this place. When you know that you know that you know, you will have divine visitation in Jesus' name. Amen. You will begin to have divine dreams in the name of Jesus. You begin to see God show up to you in the middle of the night. 
in the name of Jesus. You will be like Solomon, that God can trust you so much that even though you are asleep, even though you are laying down, you will still give the right answers in Jesus' name. Somebody give God Amen. praise. Somebody give God praise. I believe that God is going to begin to reveal some things to you in your dreams in the name of Jesus. And that is why I need you to pay very good attention to your dreams. I need you to pay very close attention to the things that you're seeing. But I don't want you to, I don't want you to be obsessed with the dreams, but I need you to pay attention to what God is saying. And I need you to pay attention to the point that you're able to mirror it against the word and mirror it against the Holy Spirit so that you know that you know that you know that you know that this is a divine dream. Somebody say, I expect divine dreams. I expect divine dreams. And God is going to speak to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Shall we rise? Hallelujah. Shall we rise?